Hello all, I am Sharon Sunil doing Masters in Biotechnology from St. Thomas College Bilai. In this video, I will be talking about the application of plant transformation for productivity and performance guided by Dr. Ujwala Supe. These are the synopsis. Introduction Transfer of genes between plant species has played an important role in crop improvement for many decades. Plant improvement, whether as a result of natural selection or the efforts of plant breeders, has always relied upon evolving, evaluating and selecting the right combination of alleles. Useful traits such as resistance to disease, insects and pests have been transferred to crop varieties from non-cultivated plants. Since 1970, rapid progress has been made in developing tools for the manipulation of genetic information in plants by recombinant DNA method. The overall process of genetic transformation involves introduction, integration and expression of foreign genes in the recipient host plant. Plants which carry additional stably integrated and expressed foreign genes transferred from other genetic sources are referred as transgenic plants. So the ultimate goal of transgenics is to improve the crops with desired traits. Desired traits like resistance to biotic stress, resistance to abiotic stress, improvement of crop yield, transgenic plants with improved nutrition, transgenic plants as a bioreactor etc. The different types of external stresses that influences the plant growth and development are grouped based on their characteristic characters. First one is the biotic stress and other one is the abiotic stress. Biotic stress such as uh, biotic stress is caused by insect, virus, fungi, bacteria or by wounds and abiotic stress such as the herbicides, the temperature, the water deficient stress ozone, intense light, flood, heavy metal, etc. Almost all these stresses either directly or indirectly lead to the production of reactive oxygen species that create oxidative stress to plants. This damage the cellular constituents of plant which is associated with a reduction in plant yield. So the major objective of plant biotechnology is to develop plants that are resistant to biotic and abiotic stresses. So the first one which is the resistance to biotic stresses. Genetic engineering of plants has led to the development of crops with increased resistance to biotic stress which can be categorized into four groups. The first one is the insect resistance, the virus resistance, fungal and bacterial disease resistance and the nematode resistance. So in table 1, uh, the Bt based genetically modified crop plants developed for commercial use is mentioned in this table. For example, we have the cotton, the Bt cotton as we all know, uh, it was being developed as uh, in resistance to insect, cotton, ballworm, tobacco, budworm. Same way for maize uh, and for potato, they were being genetically modified for commercial use and modify in such a way that they have uh, increased resistance against insects. So the protein uh, being produced because of the genetic modification done is the cry protein which is different in different crop. Now the Bt that is the Bt gene from Bacillus thuringiensis is being uh, genetically added so as to give resistance to plants. Now in table 2, this is the non-BT gene used for developing transgenic plants with insect resistance. So basically certain genes from higher plants were also found to result in the synthesis of products processing or possessing the insecticidal activities. So they are the protease inhibitors, alpha amylase inhibitors, lectins and the others like BCH and TDC. 
So, for example, in protease inhibitors, the, um, the protease inhibitors as we know are the proteins that inhibits the activity of proteinase enzyme. So, uh, the plant that produces this particular inhibitor that is the proteinase inhibitor, when they have been ingested by the insects, it interferes with the digestive enzymes of the insect and this results in the nutrient deprivation causing death of the insect. So, in this way we can control the insect by introducing the proteinase inhibitor gene into the crop plant that normally do not produce these proteins. So, these are the uh, examples of the different plant gene, it is transgenic plant, the encoded protein and the resistance to insect under the protease inhibitors. Now, the next one which is the alpha malase inhibitors as name suggests, uh, these are the inhibitors that inhibits the enzyme alpha amylase. So, as we know alpha amylase digests starch. So, in uh, the insect larvae, uh, the insect larvae secretes a gut enzyme which is the alpha amylase to digest starch. So, when the insect eats uh, the plant which contains these uh, alpha amylase inhibitors, it technically blocks the activity of the enzyme alpha amylase uh, in the larva larvae thereby the starch do not get digest and that leads to starvation and death of the insect. So, these are the examples of the uh, alpha malase inhibitors gene used and the crop and the uh, resistant to insect. Now, the next group which is the lectins. Lectins are plant glycoproteins and they provide resistance to insects by acting as a toxin. Now, in table 3, we have the virus resistant transgenic plants generated in various crops for pathogen derived resistance. So, virus infection of crops may result in the retarded cell division, excessive cell division and even maybe cell death. So, overall effects of virus infection are growth retardation, lowered product yield and sometimes complete crop failure. Now, transgenic plants with virus resistance is developed by employing virus encode, encoded genes, virus code proteins, movement proteins, transmission proteins, satellite RNA, antisense RNAs and ribozymes. So, in this table we can see the different crops, that transgene which is it uh, which uh, are the replicase protein, the movement protein, transport protein the antisense RNA, ribozyme, satellite RNA. Then the transgene mode of action, so the mode of action for example, for replicase protein, the mode of action is competition for enzyme. For movement protein, the uh, mode of action is interference with transport. For uh, antisense RNA, the mode of action is it blocks the viral RNA and prevents its translation. For ribozymes, the mode of action is a cleavage of the viral RNA. These are the list of virus being used against. Now, uh, th the fourth table which is the transgenic plant generated in various crops for resistance to fungal and bacterial disease. So, the plants do possess a general defense system against invading pathogens. This is however, not truly comparable with the immune system of the animal. So, whenever there is a cellular damage caused by pathogen can uh, be say a fungi or a bacteria and a plant pest, the general defense system of plants get geared up to provide some amount of protection to the plant. So, this natural disease resistance of plant is inadequate. So, however, knowledge on the natural system of plant resistance is useful for the biotechnological approach to develop a disease resistant. So, some of the defense of plants and the biotechnological approaches are given in this table. The first one being the pathogenesis related protein or the PR protein. So, to defend themselves against the invading pathogens, the plant accumulate low molecular weight proteins which are collectively regarded as pathogenesis related 
protein or PR protein. So, the genes which uh, can synthesize these PR proteins are being transferred to the uh, crop like tobacco, uh, brassica, nettum, napas, rice, carrot and uh, the pathogen which is uh, being kept under control because of the transformation uh, of these crops are, uh, are as follows like Alternaria, Longipus, Rhizoctonia, Solani, etc. Now we have the ribosome inactivating proteins. So, the ribosome inactivating proteins offers protection against fungal infections. So, they act on a large rRNA of eukaryotic and prokaryotic ribosomes and they inhibit the protein biosynthesis. Now, the certain um, uh, RIPs uh, that is the ribosome, uh, ribosome inactivating proteins that do not inhibit plant ribosomes are identified and the corresponding gene have been used to develop transgenic plants. So, the ribosome inactivating protein come under the antimicrobial proteins. Now, the other example of antimicrobial proteins are lysozyme. Lysozyme they degrade chitin and peptidoglycan of cell wall and in this way the fungal infection can be reduced. The other antimicrobial protein is defensin. So, defensins are antimicrobial peptides found in all the plant cells. They usually attack the microbial plasma membrane. However, this is not adequate to provide resistance to pathogen. Now, the other antimicrobial protein is phytoalexin. They are the secondary metabolites produced in plants in response to infection. They are uh, lower weight and antimicrobial in nature. These are usually present in specialized cells or organelles. Um, and during further infection, there occurs induction of genes for increased production of phytoalexin. So, these were the different ways being, um, being, uh, being performed or being done in order to create transgenic plants which are resistant to biotic stress. Next is the resistance to abiotic stress. Now, almost all the abiotic stresses such as drought, low temperature, salinity and alkalinity adversely influence the growth and induce senescence leading to cell death or reduced crop yield. Several abiotic stresses such as drought, salinity and extreme temperature have a common consequence of causing cellular water deficient or osmotic stress. Now, osmotic stress can trigger a wide range of plant responses for example, altered gene expression, cellular metabolism, changes in growth rate and crop yield. So, in table number 5, the transgenic uh, plant is mentioned which has been produced for uh, various abiotic stresses as we can see in this table like uh, for example, the tobacco plant in them the mannitol 1 phosphate dehydrogenase uh, gene was been taken from E. coli and was been transferred to the tobacco plant due to which uh, mannitol start to uh, over express at a large quantity thereby making the tobacco plant tolerant to salinity. Now, the same goes for Arabidopsis, uh, the mannitol 1 phosphate dehydrogenase taken from E. coli was been transferred. Again, over expression of mannitol led to the tolerance uh, capability of the Arabidopsis towards salinity. Now, uh, in tobacco plant, the SAC B uh, gene from Bacillus subtilis was being transferred due to which the overproduction of fructon led to the tobacco becoming resistant to drought. And so, therefore, this uh, examples goes in this manner. Now, herbicide resistant. So, uh, as we know, when we actually grow crops or plants along with the useful plants grows the weeds which is the non-useful plants. So, the weeds compete with these crop plants for nutrients, moisture, light and cause considerable 
decline in the yield and the quality of their end products. So, many herbicidal comp compounds are now available for weed management. However, as they act by inactivating target proteins essential for vital functions in plants such as photosynthesis, share which is actually found both in the crop and the wheat plants, they are either non-selective and they kill the crop plants or cause significant injury to them at the application rate required to eliminate the weeds. So, as we know the crops and weeds they tend to grow together. So, when we actually spray the herbicide it is actually falling on following uh, falling on both the weeds and on the uh, agricultural crop which is useful. So, uh, therefore, uh, basically when the herbicide uh, uh, herbicides main action is the inactive uh, is by inactivating the target proteins which is essential for uh, very vital functions like like the process of photosynthesis. So, when the herbicide tends to fall on the weed, uh, the weed dies, but at times they are because of the non-selective uh, uh, method, it falls on the crop also on the useful crop thereby killing the crop or thereby injuring the crop. So, therefore, um, production of herbicide resistant or tolerant crop plants uh, were being thought of and it was being produced and uh, this uh, led to a considerably reduced uh, losses of crop and the complete elimination of weeds alone. So, more progress has been achieved in herbicide resistance as single gene governs the resistance. So, in this only a single gene is involved in the uh, in providing herbicide resistance. So, therefore, there has been a lot of progress made uh, in the uh, in providing the herbicide resistance to plants. So, in this table this is the herbicide resistant gene and uh, their action in first the name of the herbicide against whom the plant requires resistance the name is given like bilap phos, uh, basta, uh, glufosinate, glyphosphate phosphonyl urea and imidazone linon bromoxenil. Now, the action of these herbicide leads to the inhibition of uh, glutamine synthesis, uh, EPSPS which is 5 enol pyrovil shikimate 3 phosphate synthase and ALS which is acetolactate synthase and uh, p uh, and the phospho system uh, photosystem 2 which is important for photosynthesis so these herbicide leads to these inhibition so in order to make the plants resistant enough uh, the gene the trans gene that we add into these uh, crops are uh, bar arrow a gox uh, hra c3 uh, bxn etc now, the uh, mode of action or the product leads to the formation or it leads to the uh, formation of a crop which is uh, resistant to the corresponding herbicide. Now, improvement of crop yield and quality uh, with the advances made in plant genetic engineering, improvement in crop yield and quality have become a reality. So, crop yield is primarily dependent on the photosynthetic efficiency and the harvest index. So, uh, basically if uh, we want a higher crop yield, we have to make sure that the photosynthetic efficiency should be high and the harvest index which is the fraction of the dry matter allocated to the harvested part of the crop that also should be high. So, the quality of the crop is dependent on a wide range of desirable characters such as nutritional composition of the edible parts, the flavor, the processing, quality, the shelf life, all these makes a crop really uh, high, uh, high uh, valuable in nature. So, in that the first one is the genetic engineering for extended shelf life of fruit. So, the genetic manipulation of fruit ripening has become an important commercial aspect in plant genetic engineering. So, delay uh, in fruit ripening has many advantages. For example, 
it at extends the shelf life keeping the quality of the fruit intact long distance transport becomes easy without damage of fruit and slow ripening improves the flavor of the fruit so this is how uh, a genetically engineered uh, fruit uh, helps in the extension of shelf life of that uh, particular fruit so as part of that um, the gen uh, 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 um, uh, genetic manipulation of the enzyme polygalactourinase by antisense rna approach was being done uh, for the extending of the shelf life of tomato so uh, tomato was being genetically modified uh, or manipulated by the antisense rna approach so let's see how it has been done so initially we had the tomato plant now the tomato plant uh, in it contains a gene known as the polygalactourinase gene which produces the enzyme uh, polygalactourinase and basically polygalactourinase enzyme is basically responsible for the fruit ripening for the early fruit ripening so basically through the antisense rna approach uh, complementary uh, dna or antisense gene and after thereby an antisense mrna was being synthesized um, uh, in laboratory and then uh, the uh, 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 hybridization was being made was made to be done between the normal mrna that is the sense mrna and the antisense mrna the hybridization was made to do such that the poly uh, uh, urinase mrna uh, got neutralized so because of the hybridization between the sense mrna and the antisense mrna the uh, uh, polygalactourinase mrna can no longer uh, get further translated so therefore there is no polygalactourinase produced and so therefore there is no fruit ripening and therefore well with this uh, we get a transgenic tomato plant so the tomato being produced with the help of uh, or genetically modified with the help of antisense rna uh, approach it was further it is uh, known as the flavor saver tomato plant now genetic engineering for preventing discoloration so discoloration of fruits and vegetables is a major post harvest problem encountered in food industry so certain food additives are added to prevent discoloration however these additives may cause certain health complications in human so the uh, bio if you see in the biochemical aspects discoloration of fruits and vegetables is mainly due to the oxidation of phenols into quinones catalyzed by a group of enzyme named polyphenol oxidase so these enzyme are localized in the membranes of mitochondria and chloroplasts so by genetic manipulation using the antisense approach uh, the enzyme polyphenol oxidase is being inhibited thereby successfully um, uh, delaying or preventing the discoloration of the vegetables or fruits for example which it has been done in potato now genetically engineer uh, genetic engineering for flower pigmentation there are continuous attempts in flower industry to make the ornamental flowers more attractive by improving or creating new colors beside a uh, prolonging post harvest lifetime so the cut flower industry is mostly uh, dominated by four plants that is the roses tulip chrysanthemum and carnations so the most common type of flower pigments are anthocyanin a group of flavonoids now the color of flower is dependent on the chemical nature of these uh, anthocyanin produce for example if the anthocyanin if it is a uh, pelargonidin 3 glucosidase it will give a brick red or an orange color to the plant or to the flower uh, and if uh, the anthocyanin is cyanidin 3 glucoside it will give a red color to the flower if the anthocyanin is delphinidin 3 glucoside it will give a blue to purple coloration to the flower so accordingly uh, we can produce different color of flowers uh, of any uh, plant species 
by simple modification in the nature of the anthocyanin pigments. Now, genetic engineering for male sterility. The plants may inherit male sterility either from the nucleus or from the cytoplasm. The cytoplasmic male sterility is due to the defects in the mitochondrial genome. So, therefore, it is possible to introduce male sterility through genetic manipulation while the female plants maintain fertility. So, in tobacco plants male sterility was introduced by using a mitochondrial mutated gene encoding the enzyme ribonuclease. The gene encoding ribonuclease namely Barner's gene from bacillus amylo liquefaction was transferred to the tobacco plant. So, uh, when this gene Barner's gene was being transferred it produced the ribonuclease and ribonuclease is toxic to the tapetal cells and we know tapetal cells are basically responsible for the development or nourishment of the pollen. So, uh, the, when the ribonuclease is being produced it, um, it destroys the tapetal cells thus preventing the development of pollen and ultimately leading to male sterility. So, by this approach transgenic plant of tobacco, cauliflower, cotton, tomato, corn, lettuce etc. with male sterility have been developed. Now, there is a possible way to restore this male sterility in the, uh, in the plants by crossing them with a second set of transgenic plants containing ribonuclease inhibitor gene which is known as the bar star. So, in this particular diagram if we can see in figure 3. Uh, in the first case, we can see there is a wild type in which the tapetum is intact. Now, when we modify uh, the plant by adding the Barnes gene, the Barnes gene produces the ribonuclease which becomes uh, toxic to the tapetum cells and because of which the tapetum cell gets destroyed and the pollen grains are uh, does not develop thereby making this plant a male sterile. Now, uh, so uh, now a restore factor vector which uh, is being in which the if uh, which is being used to restore the main sterility in that a bar star gene bar star gene basically it uh, uh, it produces the enzyme which is ribonuclease inhibitor gene. So, bar star is basically a ribonuclease inhibitor gene which produces the enzyme uh, uh, a ribonuclease inhibitor which basically goes and inhibit the uh, production of ribonuclease thereby keeping the tapetum intact and therefore, uh, further uh, helping in the development of the pollen and thereby restoring the male sterility. Now, in a plant if both Barnes and bar star is present since bar star is more dominant over Barnes, so therefore, uh, the ribo uh, the inhibition of ribonuclease enzyme occurs thereby making the plant sterile uh, plant fertile sorry plant fertile. So, these are the references thank you.